Hallo, Ladies and Gentlemen. My name is Mengs, and I welcome you guys to Let's Play Advanced Wars. The one, the true original, the good old classic. The game that started it all. That's not true, actually. There came several games before this, but for me, this was the game that started it all. This was the game that I completely fell in love with as a 13-year-old kid. I played it every single day, couldn't get enough of it. In many ways, this was the game that introduced me to Fire Emblem. So you can thank Advanced Wars for this channel even being a thing. Alternatively, you can blame Advanced Wars for this channel being a thing, depending on your stance. So, yeah, we're gonna be playing some... Uh, Advanced campaign today with the reboot coming out on the 3rd of December. I just cannot wait I gotta play Advanced Wars guys. I cannot hold it in any longer I need to play Advanced Wars on this channel And I've been wanting to go back and play the Advanced campaign for a very long time now Now I have played this on the channel before back in 2013 I have a fully completed let's play of this game, but it is old outdated It was like one of the first let's plays I did and my mic quality is awful My commentary is kind of cringe and I kind of want to redo it. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be playing the Advanced Campaign. It is a very tough challenge. One of the hardest, actually. One of the hardest challenges you can do in the Wars games overall. The Advanced Campaign is extremely hard. In addition to that, I am going to be doing two insane things that I didn't do in the last one. Number one, I am going to unlock the Sonya missions on Advanced Campaign. If you guys don't know about the Sonya missions, they are brutal even on normal mode. On hard mode, they are even worse. They are actually... I, I don't know if I can do it. It, it. They're incredibly difficult. But if I somehow get through the Sonya missions, <laughs> I am also going to unlock Rivals. Rivals is the hardest map ever made in Advanced Wars. It is the secret mission you get at the end of the campaign. If you do certain things during the campaign itself, you'll get Eagle in the final battle. And after that battle, you'll go on to face Eagle in a battle that can only be described as pure evil. It is just pure evil. An advanced campaign, it is fog of war and it is one of the most brutal challenges you can undertake ever. Uh, I actually managed to accidentally unlock it once on my playthroughs and I gave up. It was that hard. <laughs> so, let's see if I can do it now with like 20 years of Advanced Wars experience under my belt. But, to get there, we need to play the first mission of the Advanced Campaign. Orange Star Forces? Here so soon? But wait, something's not right here. No one wouldn't leave Orange Star's capital city unguarded. Which means, a new commanding officer? Ha ha ha, excellent. I've lost a few battles lately, but no more. An Orange Star army without Nell is no match for me. Time to teach this raw recruit what war is all about. So yes, I'm Andy. Pleased to meet you, Manx. This is the first mission. If you think the first mission is easy... Oh boy. This one's actually one of the tougher ones. Manx, Andy, do you read me? Nell, is that you? Is this a transceiver? Contrary to popular belief, airports isn't the only thing Andy doesn't know what is. So. That's a sentence. That's right, Andy. I'll be using it to contact you from here on out. As this is your first real command, I wanted to check up on you. No worries here. This is going to be easy. Oh, Andy, you're nothing if not stupid. Let me give you a few words of advice. First, let's talk about your CO power. Blah, 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 blah. Tutorial. Tutorial. Blah, 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 blah. We don't need to go through this. I'll tell you guys about this. Okay, Andy. You listen to Manx and do your best. Good luck, Manx. Take care of Andy. Yeah, I'm skipping past the tutorial. I don't know why they dis why they give you a tutorial in Advanced Campaign. I guess they just didn't really... I, I think they just forgot to take it out, honestly. So say hello to the first map. This is the first mission of the Advanced Campaign, and it is ridiculous. You don't have any medium tanks. Olaf has three. One, two, and three. It's quite tough. He outnumbers you by probably three to one in terms of pure value. So how are you going to do this? Well, you pretty much have to HQ cap him. Luckily, in Advanced Wars 1, the AI is incredibly stupid. And you can exploit this if you know what to do. So I'm going to show you guys how to really mess with the AI in this map. First thing we're going to be doing... So we're going to be getting the first strike against this tank right here. This is incredibly important. Mm. Now you see, in Advanced Wars, the AI is very predictable. It likes to do certain things. So, thing number two. The AI will usually go for infantry if it can. If there's no other really cost-effective trades, the AI really likes to attack your infantry. The other unit that your AI really likes to go up against is 
your APC. The AI hates APCs. If there's an APC in range of the AI, it will always target it. You can really use this to your advantage and use the APC as bait. And uh, honestly, in order to beat the hard campaign, you kind of have to do this. The, adv the advanced campaign is so difficult that it's kind of designed around exploiting the AI. If you're trying to just go head to head with these forces, you will just die. So right here you can see the AI does its first predictable move, which is attacking my infantry, and that's fine. This infantry are actually going to be the most important unit in the entire battle. You'll see what I mean. So most of these units will move, but most some of them are also stationary, like this rocket here, for example. This rocket will never move away. It will stand here and it'll shoot everything that comes within its range. Same thing with this rocket, as well as this medium tank. This medium tank will not move until something comes within its range. This medium tank has the same AI. It will charge you as soon as you put a unit in this area. So you don't need to really worry about it right away. So, the first thing we need to do is we need to get rid of this tank right here, so he doesn't come back and shoot shoots us in the butt. That would be really bad. So, I'm going to be sending this tank down to deal with it. Now, do you guys remember that 6 HP infantry that I said would be the most important unit in the, in the entire mission? Well, allow me to show you. So, I'm doing this. Now, why am I doing this? You see, this artillery here has a rather funny AI. It's programmed to shoot anything that comes within its range, which is pretty standard. However, it's also programmed to move towards my unit at max speed. So, by placing this infantry here, I am tricking this AI into moving the artillery onto this bridge where it will block every other force trying to attempt to go for my HQ. Now these mechs will reach my HQ at some point, so I do need to be careful about that, and they will attempt to cap my HQ, so I don't have infinite time. But by using this little trick, I am pretty much bottlenecking all of Olaf's forces down here in the south, primarily this medium tank, which I do not really have the capacity to deal with at the moment, because I need both my artillery up north. So, um, I need to clean up these forces right here. Again, my artillery, Pretty much the only response I have to Olaf's medium tanks on this map, so I gotta be really careful about that. Now, uh, I also gotta keep this mech alive. This mech is gonna be incredibly important. Uh, I don't want this mech to take damage. Pretty much one of, one of the best ways I have of dealing with vehicles outside of my tanks. Now, you don't need to worry about these two infantry. They're hard-coded to go for these two properties right here and capture them right away, so they will leave us alone. However, if Olaf pops his power, he becomes a little bit more aggressive on the turn that he pops his power, which means that his infantry might actually start to attack you. So you gotta be a little bit careful about that, but he's not getting his power anytime soon, so we should be fine. Now, I'm not going to try to get an S-rank mission on every single map. That is pretty much impossible when you're just playing on the fly. Uh, if you want to S-rank the advanced campaign, you need to use a day-by-day -day guide. Uh, every single move becomes pretty much mandatory. You cannot play around. The S-rank requirements are so incredibly strict. I think in order to get an S-rank on this mission, I think you need to clear it in like seven days or something. It's ridiculous. But I usually get around an A to a B rank when I play this mission myself. So I'm gonna try to get the best rankings, but I'm not gonna promise an S-rank. That's not going to happen. Anyway. So, as you can see right here, this artillery is standing on this bridge, and he is blocking the medium tank. So, I can pretty much just go, bye-bye. I can leave. And this infantry will stay around and make things very nice for me. So, right now, I'm going to attack this untire. Uh, I might take a point of damage here. No, I didn't. So, sometimes, uh, depending on the lock value, there's a lock value. I made a video about it, if you want to go check it out. There's a small luck modifier which randomly increases your damage done. Depending on your luck roll, sometimes you can experience your units taking a point of damage, sometimes you can experience them not taking a point of damage. It is a little random, but on this map it shouldn't really matter that much. Now I want to prevent this anti-air from taking down my mech, so I'm going to place this recon right here to shield it. Meanwhile, I'm going to place my other artillery right here so it covers my tanks. Again, I don't need to worry about these two infantry, they're not going to become relevant. So I'm actually going to shoot a little bit on this artillery right here. Uh, I don't want to put it into repair mode. That would be very bad, because I don't want it to pull back. But I want to generate just a little bit of extra power, because I need my hyper repair later on. So I'm going to move my artillery up here, as well as my APC up here. Now, now there's nothing for this artillery to shoot at, and it can't move closer to my troops. So the AI will just order it to stand still, because that's how the AI works. It's stupid. Now, you don't want to damage the artillery too much, of course, that would be really bad. If you do that, um, 
you're gonna put it into repair mode and it's gonna go back to a city to heal and that would be disastrous so we don't want that now Olaf just got his power Olaf's power makes it snow for a day and that can be quite annoying but I'm gonna set it up so that on the next turn I'm not really gonna be moving a lot of my troops anyway so it's not really gonna end up mattering a whole lot I'm gonna put my first artillery right here and my second artillery right here and then I'm gonna use my recon to draw in this tank right here so that it's right in the range of my true artillery. So since I'm gonna spend the next turn shooting anyway, I'm not really gonna be bothered by the snow. I'm kinda like Elsa from Frost, I just it doesn't bother me. So I'm gonna do this. And take out a good chunk of this anti-air. Because anti-air are pretty good against infantry, you don't wanna leave them up. That that usually doesn't end up really well for you. And then what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put my tank right here so that when Olaf's power pops in, he's not going to go and shoot my artillery from behind because that would be really bad. Then I'm going to use my APC to... Uh, uh, yeah, actually, I'm going to use my APC like this. And I'm going to supply the mech because the mech only has three shots and we were about to run out of ammo. So you got to keep the, those ammo reserves up. Again, the me this mech is such an important unit. So you gotta keep it alive. So right now, uh, this rocket is preventing me from moving my infantry forward, so I'm just gonna put my infantry here instead. And yeah, this... Uh, I am tempted to shoot another volley at this artillery, but I am very worried that I'm gonna put it into repair mode. I think it's once they reach half health, they will go back for repairs. But I can shoot on it a little bit more, just to get a little bit of extra power. Because getting that Hyper Repair is going to be quite important towards the end of the match. Let the winds of war bring snow. So here comes the Blizzard. When Olaf makes it snow, he uh, increases the movement costs over all terrain by one. Except for on roads and properties. So that means you're not really going to be moving very fast when it snows. But it doesn't really matter if all you're going to do this turn is shoot with your artillery anyway. So this Blizzard is pretty inconsequential. As you can see, his units are coming forward, and here you go, he's actually attacking me. This is something Olaf likes to do, occasionally. But it shouldn't really be a big deal. These infantry are not going to be important. I'm going to be capping the HQ with the mech, so... I don't really care if these guys are injured, it doesn't matter to me all that much. But, I am going to uh, shoot him. There we go. Now, while the CEO has their power active, they don't generate any further power meters. So, killing units while the CO power is up is actually statistically very smart, because it means he's not generating anything from this uh, tank right here, because when their power is active, their power meter doesn't fill up. So it's a nice little tick, tick, nice little tick, nice little trick to keep in mind. So, depending on your luck roll here, you might experience that this medium tank doesn't die. Yeah, as you can see right here, that's exactly what happened. Luckily, I have another medium tank, so this doesn't end up being a big uh, issue. But again, it can be a little bit annoying sometimes. I will get my hyper repair at some point, so this should be fine. Let's see, uh, we're getting close to it. I'm gonna shoot off one more volley on the artillery, but I think I'm gonna stop once it reaches seven. Oh, oh, okay, I got a good luck roll there. So now I gotta be careful, because uh, one more HP and I'm gonna put it into repair mode, and I don't want that. Anyway. Uh, I'm gonna move my mech. I'm gonna be careful so I don't move it in range. I'm gonna move my uh, APC right here. And I do believe his infantry will actually leave me alone next turn. So I'm actually just going to stay in this forest. Again, it doesn't matter if he attacks me. These infantry aren't really crucial to my final plan. But usually the AI becomes a little less aggressive when his power is not popped. So I think he will... Act yeah, as you can see right here, now he's moving towards the cities. Alright, so what I need to do now is I need to move my artillery forward as much as I can. However, I gotta be careful that I don't place myself in range of this guy. You can very easily forget this guy, and that sucks. We don't want to do that. So I'm gonna move my other artillery over here. And I'm going to position my tanks here where they can attack the rocket next turn. And the APC... I am going to be putting... If I put the APC here, I do believe I should be able to reach the HQ next turn. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Might as well re resupply a little bit, it doesn't really matter. And yeah, this infantry, pretty much useless. Uh, 
I'm gonna bring him up here just in case, but I don't really think it's gonna end up mattering all that much. And yeah, I'm not shooting more on that artillery because if he goes any lower, he's gonna go into repair mode and he's gonna pull it back and that would be really disastrous for me, so. It's looking pretty scary right now. He's getting very close to my HQ, but I will be able to get his HQ before he gets mine because Olaf is stupid and he'll waste time capturing these properties right here before he goes on to my HQ. But this turn right here is really, really important. Uh, this is actually really, it's, it's really important that you do this right. Because you want to make sure that... Basically, you don't want his medium tank to block this HQ. But that can be really hard to do. Um, so, at the same time, you kind of want the mech to end up here. Because then I can go and cap the property next turn. But you also want to make sure that the artillery are all in range. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to attack this rocket. I need to make sure I kill it, basically. I don't know if I will be able to kill it, though. So if I attack the rocket from this square right here, I'm going to... His tank is going to move on to the HQ and block me. So I don't want that to happen. So... Let's see. He cannot... He can move over here, which is quite annoying. I need to think a little bit here. It might actually be the case that I that I need to put my tank here. Because if I don't put my tank here, then he'll be able to kill my mechs. And that would suck. So I'm going to do this. I will get my hyper repair, though. Well, statistically, I should get my hyper repair next turn. So I'm going to put the, the... If I put one artillery here... Yeah, so... It looks like I'll be... I won't really be able to... I, I was going to start capping on the next turn, but I actually don't think that's going to happen now. So, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to put my other artillery here. If I had my infantry left, this would have been a lot easier, because the infantry would have been able to reach it. But, honestly, it doesn't really matter that much. So, I guess at this point, it doesn't really matter. I can shoot on this artillery now to get a little bit of extra power. Because at this point, it doesn't matter if this infantry dies anymore. The medium tank isn't really going to be able to do a whole lot. So yeah, here you go. He's going to attack me over here from his HQ, which gives him four defense, and that sucks. But if my math is correct, which I hope it is, I should have my power soon. Ah, it's so close. It's so close. Let's not attack the artillery. Maybe this is the last we need to get the power. Uh no, not quite. Okay. So, uh, what we want to do then is uh, we want to give the uh, medium tank a decoy. So I'm going to put the APC... Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. And I think I'm actually going to attack with my tank first here. Uh, this may seem a bit weird, but uh, there's a good reason why I'm doing this. Because now, I'll be able to hyper-repair it up, and I'll get that 10% firepower boost. Here we go. Mengs Andy, do you copy? No? What is it? Your power meter is full. Andy seal power lets you repair all damaged units, right? Do you know when it's best to use it? Uh, no, I don't. Well, I guess I'll have to tell you. Since you're able to repair all of your units, you should use your power when you have damaged units. Oh, and one more thing. When you use your power, all of your units will be a little stronger for that turn. Don't forget what I just told you, okay? Is that clear? Not really, but that's okay. I'll just let Mengs decide. Oh well, I guess that'll have to do. Mengs, you're in command. Good luck. Lovely. So with the added firepower increase from this, we should be able to bring that tank down next turn. Now, this tank is going to go for our APC, you'll see. The, the, the AI will always target an APC if it can. Always. Every single time it will. So I'm pretty sure if I played this better, I would have been able to do this one turn sooner. But, oh well. It's fine. So let's see, is this artillery still not in repair mode? Yeah, you see that? If it can attack an APC, it will attack the APC. It hates APCs. 
the AI just loads APC with a passion. Okay, actually he doesn't move his artillery back at all. Maybe this artillery just never goes into repair mode. So I'm gonna shoot on his infantry a little bit. This is actually unnecessary, but if I was one day slower, this would have actually delayed his capture by one turn, because this is the infantry he'll use to cap your HQ with. But uh, the AI, to my knowledge, doesn't join cap in Advanced Wars 1, so if you injure the infantry, that means he's gonna take three turns to cap your HQ. Now, in the grand scheme of things, this doesn't end up being necessary because I'll start capping his HQ today, but I just wanted to show it off. If you're a little slower, that can buy you an extra turn. Boom, boom, boom. And it looks like we'll get a day 10 victory, which I don't know if it's... I think it might be B rank, I'm not sure. Might be A rank. We'll see. The S rank requirement, I think, is like something crazy. Seven seven days or something. It's crazy. Like in order in order to get S rank in the advanced campaign, you just have to play perfectly. It's it's stupid. It's like a turn by turn thing. But yeah, we can get this property just for for the hell of it, and uh, eh, we can shoot on this artillery. Maybe it'll give us a little bit of more of a power ranking. Although I, I'm pretty sure we'll get a max power ranking on this one. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the first map done in 10 days, which is not my best, but I'm pretty happy with it. I lost again? Who in the world are you? My name's Andy. I'm the CEO. This is my advisor, Manx. Advisor? We needed no advisors when I was in the Orange Star Army. <laughs> Be that as it may, Manx, Andy. It takes a lot to best me. I'll remember your names. Mark my word. Hey, Grandpa. Who are you? Who am I, you ask? Throughout Orange Star, I was known as... Nels Papa? That's right, Nels. What? No. Urgh, that's what I get for being nice to children. No respect. Urgh, you just watch yourself, little boy. I win. Alright, let's see what we get. And that's a B rank, I think. Yeah, B rank. Again, it's hard. Alright, you do get a lot of coins, though, in uh, Advanced Campaign, which is kind of nice. Okay, so that was uh, that was fun. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed that first part. I'm gonna be doing the whole hard campaign, so it's gonna be a bit of a summer let's play in this. Gonna have a lot of fun with this, guys. Will I be able to beat rivals? Let me know in the comment section below. This is gonna be tough. Slash that like button, give me a comment, and let me know how much you're looking forward to the Advanced Wars reboot. It's gonna be great. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.